Hey guys, how's it going? It's your boy Peter Lou, Real Wheel Deal. And today is a special day because I have here the holy grail of vintage JDM wheels, the Hayashi Racing Techno Project Yayoi, also known as the Cherry Blossom Sakura Wheel. We're gonna get right into it right now, okay? First of all, before we start, I really want to thank uh, my friend David from Import Bible for bringing the wheels by. And so if you guys don't know him, he's been supplying my channel with shirts for many years. I've been running his products a lot. He recently built his uh, 240Z and unfortunately, right after our last cars and coffee, got into a pretty bad accident. After that, he decided he was going to try and build another Z or try and resurrect that one. You know, this is the wheel game. We want to get the wheels done first. So we actually ordered a set of these once they were newly announced and they came super, super fast. Pretty thankful for him to drop it off. So if you guys like his style, like his stuff, if you've never heard of him, check him out below. I linked them below. So this shirt is actually the one that has his head on the back. So now, I don't know, it's kind of like a memorial shirt for that car now. So hopefully you've heard of the racing brand called Hayashi Racing, legend, legendary name in the JDM tuning world for their wheels. And they've made a lot of different wheels over the years. And Techno Project is a brand that's derived from them where they introduced law wheel in the 80s. And Techno Project has quite a few different wheels that are very, very well known. So I'm pretty sure once we go over them, you're gonna realize how important Hayashi Racing was. Pretty much Hayashi Racing, very famous Japanese wheel maker way back in the day, originated in Osaka in Japan. So Hayashi was a racing driver that raced in the 70s and 80s. And he was developing some new racing cars and a really famous one was called the Carmen Apache. So like all racing, you're always trying to find the lightest you can, trying to find the fastest times, trying to shave off those seconds. And you notice that across the board, other cars aren't competing against them, they're already steel wheels. So previously, an aluminum wheel was never introduced in this series. And he decided that he was gonna go out and develop an aluminum racing wheel for the car that he's also developing. So he introduced a special racing wheel that was made of aluminum and it was really well received. It was really, really light compared to his steel counterparts. He evolved it into a street wheel that he started selling to regular consumers or racing consumers that could put on their street vehicles and soon that shape and that name Hayashi Racing really meant increased performance, lightness of wheel. So he started selling a lot of wheels under the Hayashi brand. Soon after the introduction of that wheel, his wheels just took off and he started branching out into different brand lines and also different wheel ideas. So here I have a couple of vintage pictures of you know all the Hayashi wheels that they've been introducing and we're gonna dive into this brand. It's called Techno Project. I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about that. Also, a little side note you might not know is that because the wheels were so well received in racing, they're being started importing all the way even here to North America. There was a gentleman called Gene Howald who was importing the Hayashi wheels. And after importing and seeing some of the designs, there is one famous one called like the Palace. It's like a five spoke, similar to the wheel that's used on the F40 that he started maybe making his own version of it. And that's what actually led to the creation of HRE. So that history kind of clouded a little bit of mystery. Nobody really knows the true fact, but kind of word on the street is that's how HRE was was enveloped so without Hayashi Racing we might not have HRE Racing today but if you know any inside information comment below let me know I'm always learning so there's a little bit of weird tidbit history on that so the success of Hayashi Racing wheels all around the world in the 80s he decided to introduce a new lineup of wheels called Techno Project or Techno Racing they're called a few derivative of wheels were being made in new designs and those designs are iconic some of the ones that he's made through those lineups would be this wheel the TRV so this is a version of like infamous Star Shark but then you see the points they're not as pointy they're a little bit more curved than the original he also made the TRX, which I have a picture here, also a very well-known wheel. The one he also made was this, the Hayashi Yayoi. And the Yayoi was a really, really iconic wheel. Even it's embedded in history. It's been made for like 40 years plus. People are still seeking this wheel. And before they were put back in production, that's what we're selling for a lot of money. So the word Yayo means kind of like new era, new life. And it's kind of fitting because the Yayo I have here is actually a resurgence. They've really taken the 15 inch, found new ways of machining to make it. And this is a newly released wheel. So this is kind of the Yayo like new life. The other thing is Yayo also uh, like March in Japanese. So March and April, that's kind of when the cherry blossoms that are famous in Japan are starting to emerge. So I think that might have something to do with the pattern here, which is why it looks like a Sakura Blossom. So it's like a March Sakura Blossom wheel. So in this production, after it ceased, so this would be the holy grail of vintage JDM wheels. This wheel was first introduced in 1979 and they ran it through the 80s a bit, but it was discontinued very shortly. It was actually discontinued in 1980. During that time, I think they still did some custom orders here and there, but in 2006, they officially started saying that they would make this wheel again, made to order, using the original sand casting method as before, but it was only by order. So unfortunately during that time, when I got some information from Hayashi, it was that 
that Fuchi love doesn't translate to sales. Those were his exact words. So everyone loved the wheel, but nobody was putting in orders or was paying this much to get this wheel. For them to make it, there needs to be enough orders for them to start putting it into production. So this wheel was kind of really famous in the Shakotan kind of cars. That kind of means like lowered body height, and it's kind of a term to use to describe cars that are like lowered in an aggressive manner. So obviously with the vintage lowered cars, these wheels were very fitting. They sat really flush to the fender, and they gave it like a really kind of like low wide stance. And it's kind of in conjunction with what we call like Kayusha cars. So Kayusha is kind of like old vintage cars. So this kind of got like a Shakotan Kayusha style wheel, which is why holy grail of vintage Japanese wheels. It's just so period correct, and it's been used and produced for so long. So wheels available in two sizes, available at 14 to 15 inch. The 14 inch was the originator, and that wheel was made of aluminum, but it was also made of older technology. So it was actually like sand cast. So even today, they still use the 14 inch one as using a sand cast method. So the new ones are being made exactly the same as how the old ones are being made. But one thing about the 14 inches is they're made in very small batches and they're still handmade. So they're made really, really low quantities and are really, really labor intensive to make. For what Hayashi was saying, they told me that they can only make four to five wheels a day using the sand casting method. The introduction of this one, the 15 inch, they introduced new technology. So instead of using sand casting, they're using die casting now with aluminum. So now with the die cast method, they're able to produce upwards of 50 wheels per day, which is a huge improvement. And also they have to go through heat treating, they have to go through this middle painting and have to go through machining. So all those processes are now being done by the 15 inch die cast wheel, which is why we're seeing like a resurgence of them back on the market. Also with their old 14 inch, the sand cast wheel, because the sand cast with imperfections, the wheels had to be x-rayed for imperfections. A lot of them that were being defective or they're x-rayed and there was flaws in them, that would be sent back to be remelted because they didn't pass the QC for those sand casted wheels, which also resulted in why so few of them were being produced. For what Hayashi was telling me, the sand casting of this original Yayoi wheel, 40% of the ones that were produced actually did go back to be remelted. That also lends itself to being because there is such low production for the 14 inch, that's why that wheel became so scarce, so revered and so rare in that kind of holy grail vintage JDM wheel game. So the original 14 inch was only produced in certain widths. It only did eight inch wide all the way up to a 12 inch wide. And also bolt pattern, they're only produced in four by 114.3. Whereas the new 15 inch, they only not only have four by 114.3, they also are doing four by 100 to get a couple more applications in there. Another thing is these newly released ones, they're only available in pink. You might've seen some that are gold centered in the vintage ones, but for the ones they're producing now in 14 and 15, they only have this Sakura Cherry Blossom pink, which is their iconic color and can be a cherry blossom. It kind of represents what the wheel was inspired by. For manufacturing, like I said, Hayashi was based in Osaka, Japan. So all the wheels are still made in Osaka, Japan, expected there. And the old version that were 14 inch, they're actually JW all approved. But because these new ones, they didn't send it through for JW approval because now it's just for like vintage style reels. I don't think they're gonna be going through the strains and the track settings that they're originally gonna be made for. Additionally, with the low production models of how many they're making, JW approval is like a very extensive and expensive process. Because of low production of the wheel, it wasn't justifiable for them to do JWL certification on this wheel. They're using an improved die cast method. So the wheel definitely is as strong as it used to be, if not the 15 inches stronger. 15 inch actually available in their widths it starts at seven inch wide and goes all the way up to a 10 inch wide so it doesn't go all the way to 12 it goes to 10 inch wide max and with a max of minus 32 offset so this is actually the biggest and the widest hayashi yayoi they make right now so now we got the history of the way i'm gonna do a deep dive on the wheel show you guys some of the crazy nice features that this wheel has because honestly aesthetically it's a beautiful wheel so the first thing that's very really obvious is this wheel it's hard to say there's spoke it kind of has this it splits up into two and it meets there so i would say originally like style wise this wheel is probably like an eight spoke split because it has these eight spokes here and they split up and they touch on the end. Then somehow they designed it to kind of wrap and make this M shape, which kind of gives you that idea of a cherry blossom. I think that's really unique is how big this bore is in the middle. Because it's a flower, you can kind of the center like big. It kind of protrudes out because of the middle of the flower. And also because of four bolt pattern, they made the flower like, you know, when you choose a flower petal, you can choose as many petals as you want to do. They made it exactly eight petals. All their bolt pattern that drilling for was four. It looked totally symmetric. So it makes it look really uniform. And you know, it's really like aesthetic and pleasing to the eye. This aluminum here is machined out on this 15 inch for the 14 inch original sand cast one they actually have to put insert here that's made of steel to make sure it's strong enough during the sand casting so for lug nuts but here this one's die cast they have it just bare aluminum here for you to mount your lug nuts on the mounting points are kind of like inside the pedal here they didn't like kind of have to change the middle here or this area big and kind of drill holes into it these holes are embedded in what would be the flower petals of it it looks very clean actually here because it looks like they paint it and they machine it after one thing i also like about the lip is not only did it machine and polish the edge and you see all the cnc machine but it was like a nice like clear on the lip as well that gives it this iridescent look it definitely looks like a two-piece style wheel even though it's made one piece because they cut this so nicely and the middle here it has kind of like a dimpled effect 
deck resembles like that sand cast method or the wheels that we see in back in the old days. Watanabe, some of the Hayashis, this middle part's all sand cast. So he has his dimple. On this die cast one, they chose to still go with that dimple effect to like complete the vintage look, which is something I really appreciate. Uh, lastly, the valve stem is here. So the valve stem, I took a look at it. It's actually like a short kind of nib and it just comes straight out. So if you have kind of like a racing style gauge, it's gonna be hard to get it on there if like the gauge part is really thick. So next to the important bit we gotta talk about is the lip. I noticed that a lot of the modern cars I have, they try to do something really fancy with the lips and a barrel. They're trying to two-step, some are flowing, some runs on the edge, starting to do a little bit more wrapping. The wheel that I saw, like 21C, 21A from Volk, do these crazy step lift things, which really make the wheel feel like a modern wheel. But this wheel, they chose to keep the lip old school style, just really hard right angles. So it's just got this really big dish here and then it just goes 45 degrees down. Second step out here, polish on the end, just this like catch edge here, just for the flange. And honestly, it looks super crazy to have just so many flat facets before it reaches this minus 32 offset. It just makes the wheel look hyper deep right away when the light hits it because it's like such a flat piece when the sun reflects back on you. It's just so much of this flat piece of metal here just makes that lip look like insanely deep and there's a lot of depth on it. Now, I'm gonna turn my attention to the side of the wheel and the side of the wheel because you can see the offset's so deep and it's like right around here is where face is meeting the barrel. Got this huge drop center right in the front. So actually, I guess if I mounted the wheel, I'd be mounting it straight up like this to get the tire around. And back here, it's actually pretty big. I kind of like that it's very thick on the back here and coming out. Gives you like pretty good brake clearance for a wheel that's like this small in diameter. So that's really, really impressive. Flanges, they have the inner flanges here to kind of hold the tire for good driver feedback. But these thick flanges on the outside, I'm gonna say these flanges are super, super thick. Like they're just super super heavy now we're going to back and the back actually is just as beautiful as the front the back they machine they chose to like do the cnc cutting all the way across too so there's actually the ridge i can feel it as well and they coat it with that iridescent i know sometimes they choose to leave it raw or sometimes they choose to make it flat but they chose to continue the beauty from the front to the back and the machine here is very clean on the back of the hub too they kind of have the original markings that were on the 14 inch as well so we still have hayashi racing here we still say made in japan and this one says yayoi project so project being techno project. Got this VIA 620 kilogram, which I said are not VIA certified anymore, but this is probably similar to the original homage of their casting. And the great thing is here, they say the size too, 10 by 15 offset of minus 32. So that's all in the back here and looks really, really good. So I got my scale set up here. I'm gonna turn on some power. And just a reminder, this wheel, uh, it's a 15 by 10 wide. Minus 32 offset, so extremely deep wheel. And I don't really have a point of reference. It's just because on this channel, as you guys know, we weigh off every wheel. Let's get on here. And this guy is 16.8 pounds. So 16.8 pounds, that's pretty pretty light, I guess, for a 10 inch wide wheel. This is like die cast single piece. So I'd say, because this is the 15 inch, they probably do have some weight savings they incorporated in this new kind of wheel versus the 14, which was originally sand casted. All right, guys, that concludes my in-depth review of the JDM Holy Grail Vintage Wheel, Dayashi Racing Yayoi. And I had to learn a lot about this wheel. Obviously, this wheel is a little bit out of my wheelhouse. So I'm hopefully you guys got some information out of it as well. And you kind of learned alongside with me when I deep dive into these wheels. And I'm really glad that they're preserving some of these vintage wheels coming out, re-releasing wheels. And they're really gutsy because they didn't just re-release the wheel in the same size before. They actually went back to the drawing board, released a bigger size, kind of fit more modern vehicles. And that's a big risk to take in today's world. So, you know, big shout out to Hayashi for doing that. And also big shout out to Hayashi for getting all the information for me to put this video together. So if you guys enjoyed this wheel or you guys have any questions, you know, reach out to Hayashi. I'm not gonna have a ton of information about these because I'm not a dealer for them. So also big thanks to David for actually bringing them by, dropping them off and letting me review them and take a good look at them before they will appear on his 240Z. So make sure you guys hit like, subscribe, comment below, and uh, we'll catch you guys next time on The Real Wheel Deal, okay? Thanks.